Right, I'm going to do some. Uh, I'm going to do some fish and parsley sauce today. Some rice. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll pull the fish out. I'll show you. What I'm going to use. Um, obviously, cod is the um, default choice, but I've got this stuff here. You can see it. It's called bassa fillet. So it's like a white fish. Um, I could probably serve you that. I could probably serve that same fish with um, parsley sauce, deep fried in batter, or anything. And I could tell you that it's cod, and you probably wouldn't, or haddock, and you wouldn't know the difference. Um, so, there's a wee bit more to it though. So you think, okay, so I'm going to use this more sustainable fish because your cod and your haddock is ha cod and your haddock is all overfished. The thing is is that cod and haddock, although it's overfished, or it depends who you believe, some people will say that it's not overfished and there's plenty of plenty of fish. Um anyway We'll just say that um, the cod and the haddock are overfished, so I'm going to go for something different. These bassa fillets are from Vietnam, so cod and haddock, you know, you could... That's just off the coast of Britain, North Sea, Scotland, wherever. So, uh, although I'm using something that's supposed to be more sustainable, it's being shipped across the from the other side of the planet, from Vietnam, so... Where's the pollock? You know, that, that was the only options. There was only cod, haddock, or this in terms of a plain white fish. There was no pollock, there was no coley. Uh, you know, there was no other kind of locally caught, you know, as in local, as in local to the UK fish um, options there, that was it. So you either go for something that's supposed to be unsustainable or something that's been shipped across the, from the other side of the world. So I went for the Air Miles one. <clears throat> Actually, it runs out tomorrow. Hopefully it's okay. So anyway, just going to do a basic, uh, like cod and parsley sauce, fish and parsley sauce, and uh, putting those cooking the cooking the cabbage through the rice was so good the other day when I did that. It's the first time I've done that. I'm going to do that again today. I just noticed I've got some celery as well. Chuck some celery into the rice as well, because any excuse to get vegetables into a dish is obviously a good thing. And it's a really good way. Um, it's a really good way to cook these vegetables because um, the nutrients come out of the vegetables into the water. Then the water goes into the rice. So you're not pouring any boiling water away. You're, you're absorbing. You're, you're eating all these nutrients. And also it's. Uh, um, it's just boiling it for a few minutes and then the water soaks into the rice, the water disappears, so it doesn't overcook the vegetables and then it just kind of gently finishes it off, steaming it, keeping it warm. So it's a really nice way to cook these vegetables. The, the cabbage came up really, really good, kind of sweet, it was really nice, nice texture. And a lot of people, a lot of people really dislike cabbage. I think if you either dislike cabbage or you know somebody dislikes cabbage, give this a try. Just slice it through the rice. Yeah, that cabbage is like 80 pence or something and that's been lasting me for... it's been in my fridge for ages now. It's a very good value vegetable. <clears throat> so it's, uh, it's running clear now. It was just just over one ramekin of rice, so we'll do two in a bit. Water. I'll put that back. Pinch of salt in it. I mean, kind of like any um, 
any vegetables would be good through this, through the rice like this. Don't have to be too accurate, just kind of roughly clank it up. So with something like this, this is quite a good example here of how to um, how to cook lots of things all at the same time. So first thing to put on is the rice because that's going to take the longest, and then I'm going to do the uh, pass the sauce, and then I'm going to do the fish. So by doing it in that order, you wouldn't do the fish first because then it'll be cooked and the um, then that will just be sitting around drying out while you do the other things so you cook them in this order and it's efficient, that's the right way to do it just clean all this up dry it Try these vegetables before I store it, and it just helps them. Just helps them last a bit longer. I'll just leave that out so it dries fully. Okay. That's the rice on. So uh, we want to do a parsley sauce. Use one of my copper pans today. Give it a wash. I hardly ever use these. Got the uh, <clears throat> got an annual bonus one year. Treated myself to some nice copper pans. They're very good. Hardly ever use them. But then when you buy the, bought the copper pans, I didn't want to um, use a metal whisk. So I've got these silicon whisks for them. So you had to to then buy more stuff. Okay. So a parsley sauce is just going to be butter, milk. You can just use plain or self raising flour, it doesn't really matter, just any kind of flour. But we'll make up a white sauce. I'm going to do two portions here, so a chunk of butter. And this is why if you can get to these, um, I mean I'm fortunate because I'm in South London here, but the shops that sell these big bunches of parsley, because that was a pound, to buy that equivalent from the supermarket in those small packets would be quite a few pounds, you know, it would be quite expensive, relatively quite expensive. For these things we can be getting the uh, tray and that ready for the fish. Okay, 
There's a wee bit too much butter here, but it's alright. Not really m m measuring anything, you'll see why. So you're just going to melt a knob of butter into it. Now that's boiling. Just turn that down to one. And then what you do is just chuck some flour into it and then give it a quick whisk. I'm going to turn that temperature down a wee bit. These copper pans are quite efficient at getting the heat in. So um, so what I, the way I like to do it is it's kind of runny at the moment. It's kind of soft. So I don't know the quantities. I'm just going to put in some flour until it kind of goes yeah, like that. It goes kind of like pumpy. Like that. So once it breaks into these kind of chunks, that's it. Now people will tell you that you should never put um, you should never put cold milk into a roux like this. But as long as you if you've got a, as long as you whisk it and as long as you mix it properly, it's fine. So I'm just going to let that cook a wee bit to take the rawness out of the flour. Get some nutmeg ready as well. Just watching that rice doesn't overboil. So then just what you do is you just put a, a touch of milk in and mix it. Splatters everywhere. Another touch of milk and then mix that. So for each bit of milk you put in you mix it through before you add the next bit. And you start by going quite slowly just by putting tiny wee bits in. If you put in too much it will go lumpy. splatters everywhere. You can use a wooden spoon for this, uh, that's like the real proper way to do it, but it takes a bit of skill to do that. Um, it's just easier to use a whisk. Again, for every bit, what you want to create is like a soft, you can almost kind of get lumps in it at this stage. Um, if you don't mix it properly, but just make sure you miss it, whisk it, really beat it, you know. Turn that down to three, three of six, it's 50% power, in no hurry. Thick sauce, I reckon. Yeah, that bit of butter I put in was a wee bit much, but um, it's okay. Just means we'll have lots of sauce. Just start slowly there after you put the milk in, otherwise, it sprays everywhere. And you can see by beating it, by doing it this nice slow way, that's uh, half power. Half, half heat, so not too hot, and there are no lumps, nice and smooth. <clears throat> so then once you get to this kind of stage where it is looking like a thick white sauce, you can can put in a wee bit more milk. It's a bit more forgiving now. Exactly the same method if you're making a cheese sauce. You just dump a load of cheese in it. I like to whisk it like that. I like to kind of whisk it this sort of top half of the pan like that and then make sure because this hasn't been touched this bottom bit in here so I like to turn the whisk around and get right in there so it doesn't nothing sticks in fact that butter was actually just the right 
quantity I think. So at this point we're kind of thinking about how much sauce I'm going to create here. Because I've only got two bits of fish, so it's just going to be two portions. So that's about right I reckon. And then for to decide how thick it's going to be, once it, I'm going to turn the temperature up now, turn it up to five. There's no risk of it burning, or sorry, there's, very, there's less risk of it burning now. Once that starts blipping and boiling, that's when you know how th that's, that's the thickness it's going to be. So at the moment it's quite thin, quite runny, but once the temperature comes up it'll thicken up. You should really use white pepper if you're a purist, but I don't care. About seeing me black bits in it, it's fine. So a good pinch of salt and pepper. Whist and a bit of nutmeg is good as well. And just remember to keep whisking because we did turn the temperature up there. So that nutmeg that's going to get in there, they'll be rock hard if those are. Get rid of them. And at any point you see there I had to just deal with something, I had to deal with the wee hard lumps of nutmeg. Just take it off the heat and you can put it back on and it'll be fine. So you can see it's thickened up now. So once it starts to boil, see it's starting to blip now. That means we know that that's the thickness it's going to be, so you can adjust it a bit more. You can put in a touch more milk if you want. In fact, I think I might put in a wee bit more milk. Just a touch more milk and we'll call that done. I've gone full fat milk here. You can use semi-skimmed. Or if it's a you know special occasion, you can use some milk and some double cream as well. That's really, really good. But... Um, you know, we've got vegetables, we've got loads of parsley, let's go for this a healthier option. I do have cream, but I'm not going to put any in. Chop most of this through. <clears throat> Some of the stalks are good as well. And you're feeling the bottom off it to make sure it's not sticking or anything. See, it's not. So once you put the parsley into this, you don't want to keep boiling it too much, otherwise you'll boil all the flavour out of the parsley. 
just dump a load of this in. Bring that down to two. that just in case I need it for something else but um again you know if you've bought these kind of packets of you know if you see these big quantities of parsley for a low price this is a obviously a very good recipe which just uses loads of this parsley up rather than it sitting in the bottom of your fridge and and going to waste. I can hear that that rice has stopped kind of sizzling and so I'll turn my grill on now. So we're about ready. Yeah, you can see all the water has disappeared from that rice. So that rice is done now. So leave it on the heat and we'll just turn it off. And then just I'm gonna I'm just gonna turn this off now. So that's just blipping so I'll turn that off parsley sauce is done but yeah a really good way to use up loads of parsley oh, I think everyone's sticking to the whisk probably take that whisk out now yeah. So good. Just put another pinch of salt into that. Well, that's done. I'll take that off. I don't want it to boil too much. Now we're ready to do the fish. That'll maybe do a wee bit of stir fry or something like that, or just we'll stick that through something. fish I'm just going to grill it all I'm going to do is I'm put a touch of use extra virgin olive oil normal olive oil would be would be the better, better one because we're going to cook with this. Just throw a bit of oil onto it. Salt. Pepper. Yeah, pepper. And squeeze a wee bit of lemon on it. Just a few minutes either side under the grill. And then we're done.
again as usual clean, you clean it up as you go along so we're just waiting for that fish <clears throat> and once that fish is cooked it'll be done as I say before it's good to let that rice uh, just sit there on the heat for a couple minutes that steaming just finishes it off nicely so I will let that parsley sauce cool down pop it in the fridge and then just stick it on the heat tomorrow just reheat it um, whisking it not don't just don't let it burn it shouldn't go lumpy or anything you just don't want to let it burn too much uh, not too much you don't want to let it burn at all when you reheat it So yeah, when you come to do this too, for the second portion, <clears throat> you're just going to microwave the portion of that rice, which you're not supposed to do, but it's fine. Stick the, uh, just reheat this sauce, um, and then just grill the fish exactly the same way, so it's a much quicker. It'll be a nice quick dinner to tomorrow, when I do the second portion. Clean up while the fish is cooking, creating a, um, as usual, a plate of, food, a plate of food in a clean kitchen. So you can quite clearly see where it's cooked and uncooked. Well, you can see that the whites cooked and that kind of clear, transparent bit is uncooked. So just let that, let that roast. Could have probably put the fish on a bit earlier, but it's fine. at the top of the grill that would have helped things along a little bit. Um, I should have put some peas in that as well. Uh, a handful of peas in the parsley sauce or even in the rice. Really really good. Just thought of that now. You could probably put one of those blocks of spinach one of those frozen bits of spinach in, into that as well or fresh spinach yeah that nutmeg thing um, sort of crumbled a wee bit at the end there 
didn't it didn't grate down very nicely so I can hear that fish sizzling now so so that's your rice with celery and cabbage through it really really good so nice we trick that to get a, a portion of vegetables into your dinner So as usual, I am going to take that off the heat, let that cool as quick as possible, put it in the fridge within an hour. If you're unsure, you can just whether it's cooked or not, just just cut just cut into it like that, and then touch your finger on the inside of it. And as long as it's really hot, as long as it's kind of burning your finger a wee bit, then you're good. Uh, this is a wee touch under actually, uh, but it'll be all right once you put the um, once you put the sauce on it, it'll be fine. It will still keep cooking as we're speaking just now. Maybe do with another wee minute, but it's fine. Once you dump this hot sauce onto it as well, that'll help cook, help cook it a wee bit as well. So um, yeah, I mean that's that funny Vietnamese bassa fish. With all the air miles on it, but obviously cod, haddock, coli, pollock, any white fish at all, really really good. And you see, you cover it with this parsley sauce, and uh, you probably couldn't tell the difference. This is the thing with coal. Coalies are really good one because they're throwing loads of coley over the side of their fishing boats. And the only reason that people don't really like it, don't really eat it, is because it's a wee bit grey. But you can see once it's um, covered in the sauce, whether it's got a wee bit of greyness on it or not, it doesn't matter. So that's you there, a nice piece of white fish, parsley sauce and uh, cabbage and celery rice, done. So good, I actually like the plate. I'm actually, I'm, I'm looking forward to my lunch tomorrow to have the, uh, to have the second portion, I can't wait, it's that good.